David Boyes argued several major cases before Justice Scalia and the Supreme Court. Boyes successfully fought against Proposition 8, California's attempt to ban same-sex marriage. He also represented Vice President Al Gore during the 2000 election recount. We're pleased to have him in the studio. Welcome. Welcome. Good to be here. Good so be what here, is it you. like? You stand up there at a podium <laughs> and there are nine justices. How was he and how was he different? Well, he was very articulate and he asked a lot of really good questions. Yeah. Uh, now there are a lot of justices on the court that ask good questions, but he was particularly incisive. Um, uh, he had a good time doing it. Uh, his questions were laced with humor. Uh, he liked to argue and he liked to engage in the intellectual back and forth. Um, and since I was usually, uh, when I was arguing in front of the court, I was usually on a side that was not his natural side. Um, I felt a yeah. engagement there that was uh, enjoyable. You just heard Jan said this is going to be an unprecedented fight to replace him. How does that affect this year's docket? Well, um, uh, for any of the decisions that would have been 5-4 with him in the majority, and there were a lot of decisions like that in important cases, um, that will be uh, a divided court, which means that the uh, Court of Appeals decision will stand. Mm -hmm. So the Court of Appeals decisions will now probably stand in those kind of cases. Now, lots of cases in the Supreme Court have decided 9 nothing, but the really important high-profile cases involving social constitutional issues, those are often 5-4 nowadays. But the Chief Justice, John Roberts, does have the authority to say, let's go ahead and rehear this next yes. term. Right. Yeah. Yes. And, and they may do that. Mm -hmm. uh, they may very well uh, do that with some of the key cases. Do you expect that he will wait to see what happens in terms of this fight on Capitol Hill, what the president does? He may, mm -hmm. but no matter what the president does, that process is probably going to take months. Right. Um, it's not going to be over in days or even a few weeks. Mm -hmm. Um, the court's uh, session is going to be over in June. Even if they get a new justice on in April or May, which would be probably pretty quick, um, you're not going to have time. Even if uh, the president makes an appointment and the Senate leader, Mitch McConnell, says we're not going to hear it, does the president have any options? Not really. Um, uh, you need Senate confirmation. Right. And uh, I, I think that the, the Senate could stymie it. And I would hope they would not. Remember, Justice Scalia himself. But they say they will. They say they will. But Justice Scalia himself was confirmed unanimously by Republicans and Democrats. Uh, they knew he was very conservative, but they believed that the president had the right to appoint somebody mm. who he wanted, as long as he was qualified. You know, and I would hope the Republican senators would take the same view. You know what I keep thinking, though? This fight is going to focus attention on the Supreme Court yes. and the current cases yes. that are before the Supreme right. Court, which affect everyone's lives. I mean, we have cases on affirmative mm -hmm. action. We have yeah. cases on contraception and yeah. Obamacare, um, what are, voting rights. You know, I mean, there are unions. There are some really big cases before the court this year. There are. And th this uh, uh, event is going to place the Supreme Court at the heart of the presidential election. And so how will yeah. it play itself out? I, I think that both uh, Republicans and Democrats, I think, will be focused much more than they usually are on the power of the president to appoint a Supreme Court justice. That is, in many respects, the most enduring legacy that a president has. Mm -hmm. And too often in political races, that gets ignored. Uh, I think this is going to be front and center. And, and if, in fact, if, if, if Obama gets to make the appointment, that'll be his third. Yes. Choice. Yes, and, and the next president, um, whoever that president is going to be, is likely to have another couple of choices. Because they've got justices mm -hmm. of 70 and 80. Yes. You know, Scalia once said that if you can't disagree ardently with your colleagues about some issues of law and yet personally still be friends, yes. get another job. <laughs> right, right. We mentioned here that he was famously friends right. with Justice Ginsburg. Yes. Um, you knew him for a very yes. long time. Right. He wasn't afraid of a little disagreement, was no, he? No, he enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, he, he liked, mm -hmm. he, he, he would hold passionate views. But even if he thought your views were wrong and maybe even totally indefensible, he never objected to your having those views. In fact, he liked people who had different points of view. He liked to engage in that. Um, I think he liked teaching law uh, for that reason. Well, in fact, he did. I mean, you know, he went in private practice with Jones Day yeah. uh, and then decided he wanted to teach. Yes. So he then went to teach. Yeah, I, I, th I think being on the bench is the only thing that would have kept him from teaching. He liked that intellectual back and forth. He liked mm -hmm. that arguing. 
Uh, he enjoyed it. But let me, let's just make this last point, too. Uh, he was towering in terms of intellect, in, intellect. in terms of, yes. of what he meant to yes. the court while he was there. Yeah, this was a brilliant judge. I mean, he was a brilliant, passionate, effective advocate for his vision of what the Constitution ought to be, what our society ought to be. Originalism and strict construction and all that. Yeah, I don't know about strict construction. I mean, I think that depends on how you interpret some of his decisions. <laughs> but certainly, uh, originalism uh, was, was, was something that he was a strong advocate of. The strongest I think. advocate. Mm -hmm. I think. And, and he, he brought the court along uh, to a large extent on that. Thank David you, David. Boys. Thank you. Thanks so much. This was great talking great, to you. Great talking to you.